I'm going to explain the optical isomerism that you see in complexes that have three bidentate ligands bonded to them with a central transition metal ion. So an example came up in the Physics and Maths Tutor Transition Metal Elements 1 question paper that had a nickel center of a six coordination number octahedral complex. And what I want to really explain is why these two optical isomers are different. So there's this here and another one next to it in the question paper, exact same octahedral structure. And the question one of my students posed is why would the uh, why would the isomer that has a bidentate ligand bonded with these two bonding points be different to the isomer that is bonded here at these three points? So you can see, hopefully, that those are bonded in different ways. So we've got three bonded on these two, and then three here instead of the ones in the middle. So there's a gap there. So why are those optical isomers? Why can't you just rotate one of these molecules and have it be the exact same as the other one? Well, to that, we have to look at the rotation axes and really concentrate on what this means to have this nickel ion drawn in the center and to have these lines. So I'm going to draw a straight line down through here. And if you're a mathematician, you already know that we have three orthogonal axes. And we have, so this straight line coming out here, that is why we draw this line. So the vertical axis is really obvious to understand. It's just, we're facing it. It goes vertically up and down across the paper or across the whiteboard. This is the second axis that I've drawn and the dashed line indicates that we are behind the page and the solid little triangle there indicates that we've come out in front of the page. And what is going on here is that we have a 90 degree bond there. That is 90 degrees. So is this bond. That is 90 degrees. They are orthogonal. And then we have the exact same thing happening back here. And this is what forms the octahedral complex shape. Those are fixed. This bond, horizontal, in the horizontal plane of the page, which is quite difficult to see, those are also 90 degree angles. So now it's like we have, this is the page facing us. We have sliced through it. like this and formed a plane across that is at 90 degrees, that is horizontal, right? Now, what happens if we start rotating things around that axis? There are three types of rotations we can do around this axis. We can rotate the vertical axis. So we can rotate around this way. We can rotate the first horizontal axis. We can rotate this axis around horizontally. And the third rotation we can do is on the other axis. So not the vertical, not that horizontal, but this one. We can rotate that went around 90 degrees. And each of those rotations will result in anything that's bonded on these six spokes being in a slightly different position. 
So what I want to do with this video is show you what those different rotations result in if we have a bidentate ligand and why these two isomers do not result in the same rotations. So to begin with, I need to draw again. There's my vertical axis, there's my behind the page, but horizontal in the horizontal plane. And then it comes out in front and again to the back. And then this horizontal, again, all six of these spokes are at 90 degrees to one another. So I need to draw that three times. I will actually need to draw it six times. But we'll get there when we get there. It's just filling that in. And again. To show you each of the three possible rotations. And what I'm going to do is use a ball and stick type model where I'm going to do different pairs. So the top and then the back left is going to be this red pair. And I want you to imagine that they are connected. We sometimes draw by dentate ligands like this. So we have just a curved line to represent the bond that they have with one another. And then on the bottom there, bonded like that. Um, but when I draw the rotation, I'm not going to include those lines, but what you have to remember is that these molecules are fixed in space. They can't rotate around themselves. Once they're bonded to the central metal ion, that is that is the shape. You can't change that without putting in energy to the system and deforming the molecule, it won't work. So what I'll also do is on the other side of the page, show you the equivalent rotations on the isomer and you'll see that we don't, we, we can't possibly, I won't show every single possible rotation, but I'll try to show as many as possible to show that you won't obtain the same molecule, they will be different. So hopefully you'll get a sense of the rotation. The best way to understand this really is to play with a physical ball and stick model. If you've got lollipop sticks or um, little cocktail sticks or toothpicks or something like that, that you can stick little balls of clay or polystyrene or something and have a go yourself at rotating each of the three axes. Um, you'll understand why these rotations won't work. So what is the optical isomer of the top one? Well, it will mean the red will be bonded to the other side, the back right instead of the back left. And then we have the purple one bonded to this one down here. So I'm going to leave out the, uh, the rest of the molecule. But of course, what I really mean is that that is an attached, that is a single molecule. It's not two separate balls, it's two oxygens in this case, because we're talking about the oxalate ligand bonded in three different places. So all of these three are the same. I'm not going to move them there. And then these are going to be in plane. And these are different isomers. They are not the same. So what we'll do for the top one is rotate around the vertical axis. And then we'll do the two horizontal axes and just a 90 degree rotation for each. To show you that we will not obtain the other, the molecule on the other side of the board. So this one, we're going to rotate about the vertical. So what's going to happen when we rotate about that vertical axis? Remember, I drew this a second ago. It's around this axis. So I'm going to take, as though my vertical axis is fixed in space, I'm going to rotate around it. So the vertical stays exactly the same. The red on the top and the blue on the bottom aren't going to move because they're rotating about themselves. They're symmetrical around that rotation around that rotational axis. But what will happen is that all of the horizontal ones are going to move 
around this plane. So the red one that was here, if I'm rotating for some reason, I've chosen an anti-clockwise rotation, um, that's actually going to move around to this position. So this red one will now be here, right? Can you see that? And then the blue one that was there will have rotated around this position. The purple one that was there will now be at the back. So this was the purple that was here. That's now going to have rotated round to the back. Now, in reality, that is possible, right? With the molecules that we have, we've not broken any of the bonds in the molecule there. That's totally fine, completely doable. Now, if I do the same rotation, let's see what happens. So the same vertical anti-clockwise rotation on this molecule. I mean, I could even, I could do, I could do it both ways, you'll see. Uh, and there. So again, at the top and the bottom, they're not going to move. So in this case, we've got a red and a purple one on the bottom. So already th those are not the same, right? Because we've got a red and a blue on the other one. But let's look at where this purple one's going. That's going anti-clockwise. The purple one is going to go around here. Now we've got a blue pair that will move around to the front. And then the other red one will move to the back. Now, Although we have put the red ones in the correct position, the blue and the purple are swapped. That's not right. They're not bonded in the same way that they are in this molecule. They're in almost right, but not quite. So we've got the blue one bonded across this plane and the purple one going across the back plane instead. So those are not the same, and it's certainly not the same as the other rotation we have over here. We've got the same issue. They're all in, they're just all one plane out of reach of one another. Now, what if I try, like maybe I've just not picked the, the right rotation, right? Oh, I've missed out. I missed out perfectness on these ones. Okay, so now if I do a rotation, uh, so this was on the vertical. So now what if I do a rotation around this axis here? So I'll just overlay it here and then get rid of it. This, I'm gonna fix this red and this purple in place. And I will rotate, sticking with my anti-clockwise sense of rotation for some reason, I will rotate around that way. So imagine like a rolling pin, I've fixed the two ends in my hand. I'm going to rotate anti-clockwise around that axis. So let's see what happens. So we know that those two are gonna stay fixed. and the verticals. So I'll start with my fixed ones, those red and purples, those are not going to move. And I am rotating, so let's track where the purple one goes, I'm rotating around that way. So that purple is gonna move from there up to the vertical. Right, okay, where's the other red one going? Well, if that purple's moved up there, the red one must have gone down to here. And then of course, that means that the blue have flipped around to the back. They've gone from there to there and down there to there because we were rotating anti-clockwise. Do you see that plane? All right, now let's try the other molecule. The isomer, again, fixing that. Not the front. Fixing the exact same position. So this time we have the blue at the back and purple at the front. And doing that same upwards flip rotation, we can see that the purple down here will have moved up to here. Great. Then the red ones will have both flipped round. So the one on the top will now be at the front and the one at the back will now be at the top. And that leaves us with that blue that was at the front, would have gone down to here. 
Okay, cool. Now, so far, you can't see any equivalent molecules. None of the ones on the left-hand side are the same as the ones on the right. None of them. You can tell that these are rotations of one another, almost, by rotation. But they're not across to the other side of the board. So let's do the final one anyway for completeness. Hopefully you're starting to get the idea now. And this time it's going to be this last axis that I'm drawing in. We're going to rotate around this axis. So this axis this time. Um, oh, again, I left out the purple molecules, the purple ligand bond. Um, so just to show you an overlay, I'm going to be rotating this axis and we're going to go around again anti-clockwise. We're going to flip the whole molecule up that way. So those two are going to be the ones that stay the same. We're going to keep that purple ball there that purple bond and the blue bond there. But what's gonna to happen to the blue that was down here? Well, it's gonna move up to here, isn't it? So, and we will have the red ones. Let's do those. Uh, the red ones are gonna go down. So the top one will go down to here and the one that was down here will go down there. And that of course leaves the purple one that was out at the front will have moved up to the top on that 90 degree rotation. Again, you can't see that molecule on the other side. It almost looked like it could be that one with those two blue ones at the front and the red one at the back and a purple one at the back. Almost the same, but no, not quite because the blue and the red are in the wrong place. Or the, the purple and the red, sorry, uh, on that vertical axis are not in the right place. They're swapped over, they're opposite. And that's exactly what's happening when you're trying to stack your hands on top of one another. You've got kind of opposite things are in the right place on top of one another, but they won't fit exactly where they're supposed to be on top of one another. So this last molecule, again, we're going to do this final rotation around here. So it's going to be the blue and the red that are the same this time. And let's track where that goes. So this red at the top is going to end up going down there because we're doing this plane of rotation. So let's see where that red goes. That goes down to there. The blue that was there will go down to the next position. That was a purple. So now the purple has gone up to the front and the purple that was at the front will now be at the top. Okay, so have a look at what we've got here. Can you see across this mirror plane any of the same molecule? No, you can't. They're almost the same. It's frustrating. It's like they would almost be the same. You can see two of the pieces of information can be in the correct sense, but the last one will be swapped over. You just can't get them to rotate any way around to be the same. And that is why they are isomers, because they have the exact same structure but the sense of rotation and the symmetry is different. They are left-handed and right-handed, and you can't get them to sit exactly on top of one another by a single, um, single symmetry operation um, without, without a point of inversion, okay? All right, 